and we are in the Situation Room in the INEC office in Natarawa local government area of Tanu State where the collection is currently going on and all the uh, uh, agents are coming in with their results for the collection officer to start doing his job uh, properly. To you and would want to know from what we hear about violence in some other areas like um, Sumtuma area and then Yelwa as well. We just want to have an idea of what you know about that, whether you know the process is as we're hearing it is. What's the situation, Idris? Well, as for Yelwa, like you said, uh, Yelwa ward. Uh, earlier today we were in Yelwa with my colleague Nanshin and you've seen her P2C where she talked with some uh, electorate and then some of the presiding officers there. Uh, initially there were some disruptions and then later on the presence of security men, uh, the protest was later, uh, 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 elections later resumed fully and we never had any other problem in that particular unit. And as far as, as, as I know, I never had either or, or any of that uh, Yelwak uh, uh, polling unit was cancelled or something happened in that particular place. What I do know is that earlier there was some disruption, but it was later rectified and the election went on uh, uh, successfully. Okay, Idris, do you have any idea when the coalition will end? From what you can see there, or if you've spoken to anybody, do you have any idea when it will be over and we can hear any result there? As far as uh, this process is concerned, I just spoke with the doctor. Uh, whether he, uh, how soon is he going to finish this thing, he told me that he, he can't say but he is doing it and uh, as soon as he finished he will move to the INEC headquarter where he will announce the final result there but as of now we can't say this is the exact time when this process will finish but as of now all the polling units in Gamma, the 62 polling units in Gamma are in this uh, uh, place. Okay Idris, uh, before I let you go, what about the turnout? Um, the voter turnout. I know you've been following this um, since, uh, I mean, earlier today. Do you see a strong turnout of people, or was it a trickle? What do you think? Well, like you know, like Gamma was actually one of the focal uh, points, one of the most uh, interesting center where all eyes are on on, on, on that particular place. You've seen my report earlier this morning. There was a large turnout of uh, voters in that particular place. I haven't noticed any low turnout of voters. So uh, initially people thought that maybe people will not uh, uh, come out to vote. But when we visited Gamma earlier today, uh, the ward, some of the wards within Gamma area, we saw that uh, there is actually a mass turnout of voters. In, 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 in those places. But certainly, you cannot compare it with the first governorship election that took place uh, on the 9th of this month. But the supplementary that took place today in Gamma, I must tell you that I've seen a mass turnout of, uh, of voters in Gamma. All right, thanks a lot, Idris. Uh, we'll probably check in with you again to see how far the process is progressing there. Idris, you've been there from, all the way from Kano. Uh, Data, now you can do the honor uh, yeah. of the first question. <laughs> so, Mr. Thomas, uh, Mr. Thompson, the, you've watched or uh, observed the elections from the ground. I mean, indeed, there was an election at ETS. I believe that's the area where you live. Yes. From what you've seen today, how would you describe the election, even with the reports of incidents here and there? Let us, first of all, uh, take a deep breath and uh, thank God that if we looked at the projections for the entire election period, if we, we did a strategic session about a year and a half ago, you would have expected things to be a lot worse than they have turned out. So first of all, we need to heave a sigh of relief across the country for that. Now, having established that, 
I also think that the major lesson we are learning, whether it's the supplementary or the ones that have just gone by, the major lesson Nigeria is learning right now, which I believe is something that will carry forward after the election, is the fact that there is a deep struggle for the future of Nigeria. And uh, the platform that we need to pay attention to the most right now is the struggle between the digitals and the analogs. Um, in this present election, you will see that because Nigeria has chosen to stay analog in its thinking, practically a lot of the challenges that would never have been have all come out of the fact that we are still analogs. So I believe that immediately when these elections are over, for us to be able to give value to human worth, avoid needless bloodshed, one person dying is too much for any election anyway, we would invest a lot more in Nigeria's digital future, especially when it comes to the elections. That will keep us safer. It will give more value to the lives of our citizens. And of course, it will also permeate all other areas of our national life. But you know, anytime we hear this conversation or the narrative, go digital. Yeah. The response is, oh, it needs to be in the law. It needs to be included. So obviously, we're looking to the Ninth Assembly now. Um, do you think that they would actually take that step to ensure that this, which, which we need to make the process easier, would that happen? You see, the, 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 all the motivation we need to go digital right now is playing out across the country. First of all, nobody, Nigerians are good people. Bloodshed, violence, extremes, extremism, and all that is not something that's really native to the culture of uh, Nigerians. And the fact still is, with the amount of what we have seen, even with the very lovely management of information that has gone on in the course of these elections, it is obvious that it is even the public now. This goes beyond the government and the arms of government. I believe there's going to be a groundswell of opinion coming from the public end that is going to push and enforce that we must upgrade <coughs> from being analogs to the digital level. That's interesting. Um, Mr. Odukoya, uh, many people w w we speak to point out that people are very reluctant to change the system that put them in power <laughs> because part of what that system ensures is that it leaves enough room for maneuver. So when Mr. Thompson talks about, you know, us going digital, the people who are going to do this, they might be under quite a bit of pressure, but will they? Do, do you think they have it in mind that they will do this? For, you know, knowing fully well that some of the loopholes that they need will then be closed if they do so. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think that's a very, very valid point. Uh, to, I think the National Assembly had already passed the law uh, that will take us at least nearer uh, the El Dorado that Mr. Thompson uh, mentioned, that is going from analog to digital, because it, it will reduce human interference, okay, and of course ensure the value of life. But the president and the government is own wisdom did not sign the bill into law. I think what he said was I will sign it after the election. Well, the election is nearly over now, mm -hmm. okay? We are praying that, and we hope that the president will do the needful in the next one month. Now, the issue is this. The president has a golden opportunity to leave a lasting legacy to etch his name you know, in the annals of the history of this country by bequeathing that electoral reform law that will ensure that the next election in 2023, that's the uh, general election, will be devoid of all this uh, chaos. And uh, it's not contested again. 
and uh, so it doesn't have a personal. It doesn't have a personal. But then the race for Tony TV has already started. <laughs> so they are in quotes interested parties who may not allow this to see the and that's why the people, the electorate, come into uh, play. We have seen that today. The politicians now see that every four years, the electorate is actually the king. You can see in Kano, they are running all over the place trying to woo the electorate. But this is also where the other political parties who have lost the election should come in. Like we said the other time, Democracy is not all about election. One of the key roles of the political parties is enlightenment, educating, and mobilizing the electorate. And that's a process that should start now. We should start demanding the rights from our government, pass the electoral, uh, sign the electoral bill, and even if you refuse to sign the electoral bill, we should ensure that all our senators uh, override this veto, or else we wait for them. And that brings me to the other issue of democracy. We shouldn't wait for uh, every four years, like I said the other time. We have the option of recalling our legislators. The opposition from party, the civil uh, society, should get up and see how we can... Because this is some of the check and balances that will ensure that democracy operate as it should operate. But the process of recall is mm -hmm. quite cumbersome. If you thought about that, I mean, an attempt was made to recall a senator, and we all know how long that took and how it turned out at the end of it, even though there were court cases against the recall. But when the process eventually started, how many people actually went out to sign that document to recall? Mm. You, you, you're actually right, okay? And we are still saying the same thing. That's why we need the press, we need the civil society group, we need the I'm not going to attack the press today. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to speak. Okay. Okay. No, a lot of people are needing the press. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. Right. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Yeah. I also talked talk about the press. No, exactly. no sincerely, it's true, okay? So that you know, we can get the National Assembly, both the House of Rep and the Senate, to start looking at how they will make the process of recall more simple or simpler. <laughs> okay, at this point, let, let's go to uh, the Abuja commandant of the NSCDC. Uh, and Mr. Yamu, uh, your own forte would be security. Uh, there are those who have said, well, in spite of the fact that these were very small uh, numbers of polling units and elections, and, uh, but that we still had people disrupting the process. Uh, to take an example, in Benue, uh, there's a particular area where the voting materials for 13,000 uh, uh, potential voters uh, were seized and burnt. Uh, what do you think is the issue here? Why is it that it seems as if we are unable to completely secure these elections? Uh, come again with your question. I said... Come again, it, Yes, I, I, I'll ask it again. I said... These elections, today's elections, are with a smaller number of voters, a smaller number of units, and therefore they involve a smaller number of people in total. Yet we still have reports of, you know, disruptions, uh, violent disruptions and so on, security breaches, if you like. And one is saying, lose as an example the Benue, uh, the Benue incident, where voting materials for 13,000 uh, registered voters uh, were seized and burnt by unidentified uh, hoodlums. What, what, what is it exactly that we are not doing, that we are not able to secure this election? Wow, thank you very much. I believe uh, the government is doing everything possible, as you can see, to make the election free, fair, and peaceful. But situation like that cannot be ruled out and uh, with the help of uh, the security i think such situation are contained 
But in this that instance, they weren't contained. If you look at the TV screen now, you'll see the visuals of the visuals I'm making reference to. That's what remains of the um, the voting materials that were on their way to the uh, units uh, for use. Uh, the report is that the people going, and including some security men, as a matter of fact, were ambushed by a group of hoodlums, and they were asked to surrender those materials. They had no choice but to surrender them. And rather than taking the materials away, they chose to bomb them, which is what eventually happened. Hello? You see, election is not a do, it shouldn't be a do or die affair. And uh, in any game, there must be a winner. That is what people should have in their mind. That no matter the game between two people, the winner must emerge. And anybody that emerge should be able to applaud the other person. That's the way we look at it in the, the security uh, angle. It's okay. Uh, coming back to Lagos. I was going to come back to, yes. <laughs> to Mr. Thompson there. Yeah. <laughs> I, would you want to weigh in on that before? Oh, oh yes, let's uh, appreciate his uh, contribution. But the truth is that if we put our thinking caps on, we'll find out that this election violence is, is a systemic flaw. A dog has to bark. A cow has to move. The way Nigerian politics had been structured from the onset is what has included violence as a culture. So these things are not going to disappear like that until we now go back to tweak the system. It's a systemic flaw. Um, he says elections should not be a do or die affair, and he is right. Now, the question we need to begin to ask ourselves is, why is it now a do or die affair? That will take you all the way back to the struggle for resources. By the time you begin to ask your questions one by one, you're going to find out that we're going to end up somewhere, which is the greatest lesson that the elections of this year is going to leave behind as its legacy when all this is, all the dust has settled. Um, his contribution earlier on, when we're talking about the motivation for the digital solutions and all that, you want to remember that we have many stakeholders in this country right now. Among those stakeholders, there are statesmen, I've met with quite a number of them, who are extremely unhappy to see the kind of degeneration that has happened to their nation. Now, these are voices that I know will not be silent. Among the stakeholders, you have young people. Those who are 16 right now, in the next four years, running through, will be 20 years old. Their sheer numbers and the mass muscle makes them also stakeholders. Let's also mention the foreign observers who have come in this time around. You see, sometimes they humor us in Africa and humor Nigerians. When an observer comes in to, to watch an election and he sees the burning of ballots, the you know, killing of people and all that, many of them come from countries where if you kill two people in an election, <laughs> it will become an international incident the results of that election would hardly be acceptable to anybody. They would let you know that they don't have such a culture to have elections, to talking about casualty figures of this level, they would give themselves no rest. Now, the only reason why they've been humoring Nigeria to talk about approving elections, despite the fact that one person <coughs> lost their lives, is because of the, you know, exigencies of the moment, I mean, exigencies of the moment. Once this is over, there are people who will rise above politics, who must rise above politics. Those are also stakeholders. And I can assure you that many of them, uh, people I know, will give themselves no rest until they're able to help to educate people better, to understand that Nigeria has a systemic flaw. The only reason why anybody would not want to go digital would only be because of the fact that you are struggling needlessly for resources that will pay, that will be too small compared to what the nation will have if we upgrade the thinking of the nation. 
So I can tell you for, for sure that even the security we're talking about, except strategic thought, is put into place, and then we reprogram the country. These things will be recording okay. decimals. But Mr. Thompson, look at the deployment you know, that the acting IG um, announced. Five deputy inspectors general, three assistant inspectors general, 15 additional commissioners of police to provide direction and all that. There, there was some thought put into that, but in spite of that, you see people running about with boxes and, and everything. Well, I don't Trust know. me. With that number you are talking about, what you are talking about here, don't forget that when we finish all this, you have to reduce all this to individuals. Men who have wives, who have children, who are struggling daily to survive. So whether you like it or not, whoever wins election, whoever is incumbent, whoever has the advantage uh, to call uh, and uh, dictate what your future would be like, you'd have to kowtow to that opinion more than that of anybody else. So even if you deploy the entire uh, uh, police force, what we're talking about is this now. <clears throat> the way forward for us in Nigeria to avoid all this is not work on the outside. We have to work on the inside of the Nigerians. That has to be Before you go any further, Ijama, you want Oh, to... yes. You know, obviously, we had elections here in Lagos. A lot of people were thinking... And actually, not far from where... <laughs> the like, a lot of people were thinking, oh, did they? But we have Chris Lems, um, who is there and wants to give us a situation report. So, Chris, how's it going where you are now? Well, there are quite a number of people standing behind you. Um, thank you so very much, Ijoma. It's, uh, it's been a very, very wonderful day. Um, uh, from the very start of the of the election process, the rerun election for constituency one, and um, of course up till now that the results uh, had been announced. And of course, with me, I have uh, the winner. Uh, he's just been declared as the winner of the election by um, the Independent National Electoral Commissioner for the constituency one in Ibeju, Lekki. I'd like to say, first of all, congratulations to Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been a wonderful time, you know, a build up to this election. We've had um, lots of uh, tension, we've had lots of stress, and of course, right now, you've been declared the winner of this election. I mean, how do you feel right now? Well, first of all, I need to corroborate that impression. There is nothing like, um, uh, I, can you come again with that your question again? Yeah, yeah, I said it's been tense, it's been tense moments, there's been a tension, there's been, you know, but right now you have been declared. There is nothing of such within here because I believe that I'm a man of the people. My people need me. This is my third time. I'm going for the third time the Lagos State House of Assembly. You can see my people around me, the cabbage, the others, and the chiefs in the Bejuleki, they are for me. There's no tension at all in the Bejuleki. What just happened, night of March, just an error of our footing as a result of the breakdowns of the, the, uh, the, the caldera. So that is why now people were not properly enlightened that they wanted as a breakdown of the caldera, this is up footing. That was resulted in the cancellations of the results. Okay, now, uh, now that you're going back to the house, what would the people see differently right now? Well, I expect my people to see a lot of difference. In terms of the legislative, I will give them the best. In terms of inflation projects into my constituency, I promise I'm going to give them the best. In terms of the youth empowerment, I will always be there for them, and I believe that I will improve on it. Okay, talk about INEC, you know, uh, the processes and um, everything that they put into making this a success. Would you say um, INEC did very well? Well, there is a room for improvement. What I would just say is that they need to improve on their job. Say, for instance, training of the adult staff, I think the, the two or three days is not enough. They should I, I mark about a week for the training of the INEC. I've even that they have done that, the issues of the cancellation could not have happened. They need to improve on that. And they also need to engage the constituents on the sensitization program so that once there's a breakdown of social materials, they, need, they don't need to be told before they stop. Were you concerned about uh, voter apathy? Because in one of the uh, polling units we visited, where they expected about 5,000 people, less than 500 persons voted. Are you concerned about voter rapid? And when the people just fed up that because the last, about two weeks ago, all of them came out in mass to cast their food. But coming to the redundant, and it is the first time in the history of Ibejuleki that they are going to have this type of exercise twice. So that is why the turnout is very, very, very low. And I promise that the subsequent elections, Come local government election, if you come here, you are going to witness change 
All right, thank you so very much. Thank Congratulations you very much. to yeah. you. And um, of course, that is it from uh, um, Ibejuleki right now. The resort has been announced and, of course, it's been declared winner. And I hope uh, he, he would be willing to work with uh, even his opponent and other uh, 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 candidates from various parties. But for now, it's uh, still very peaceful around here. And security presence actually was quite high. A lot of policemen, soldiers, anti-bomb squad were deployed you know, to this area to ensure that uh, they, they, we witnessed a very peaceful process. And that's it right now from um, Ibe Juleki. Back to Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Chris. I'm um, standing with some very happy-looking people. Uh, I was going to ask you a few more questions, but I shall leave that until you come back to us next. Chris Elam's there, <laughs> Ibejuleki, the Lagos area. And um, Mr. Thompson, that's your area. I will come to you, but <laughs> we'll take a short break, and then we'll let Mr. Thompson react to what he's just seen that happened in Ibejuleki. Stay with us, please.